Hello everyone, hope you're having a great afternoon. I'm going to be your host Mackenzie Klin and I'm excited to introduce to you guys today's discussion about best blogging practices. So this is a third in a series of seven webinars offered by Humber Online Solutions as part of our Building Digital Capacity project. So this project has been generously supported by the college's Department of Applied Research and Innovations. If any of you would like to join our next webinar, it will be held on Thursday, October 1st from 7 to 8 p.m. And here the students will be discussing digital analytics and so measuring social media ROI. Tonight's webinar, Blogging for Best Practices, is presented to you by Thomas Durham. And with that, I think we are ready to get started. Thank you everyone for your time. And I'd now like to introduce to you Thomas Durham. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Durham and thank you so much for attending today's webinar and we're going to be going over basically blogging 101 and how to be a successful blogger. So this is really an A to Z complete guide to blogging. So if you don't know anything about blogging, that's okay, you'll definitely learn something. And if you do know about blogging, you're still going to learn some stuff because we're going to cover everything in this. So get your coffees ready, I hopefully you already did have some water ready and let's get into it. So a little bit about me. Um, I graduated from the Digital Business Management Program in April 2020. I'm currently studying Business Insights and Analytics, part of uh, the DBSA and Humber Online Solutions since September 2018. That is hosting events like these and uh, working with clients through Humber College. And then I've worked for digital agencies before. I've been paid to write from anything to personal concierge type of blogs to things about pets. So I've done it all. Right now I have a company called Mango Digital. Let's go jump right into the content here. Well, the first section, it's going to be really understanding why we're actually blogging and what's the purpose. And as we move towards the end, we're going to get into more specific details like SEO for blogs, market research for blogs, things like that. So our first topic is going to be how blogging and marketing work together. Uh, this is a very important concept to understand because I find even myself and a lot of people, they have like a clouded vision of what blogging is and like what the purpose of that is for and you know how that ties into marketing. So we're not going to be blogging for no reason. There's definitely people who do blog for fun and kind of do a vlog style and it captures their life. But the main reason why you're going to blog is actually, um, first, before I get ahead of myself, many of you have probably seen this slide. And if you're in marketing, you've definitely have, or some sort of business courses, maybe in high school, you've definitely seen um, this. So at the top, this is called the conversion funnel. So at the top of the conversion funnel, we're going to be generating awareness. And this whole process is to sell a product or service. So imagine you're trying to sell some product or service that you offer. And for anyone to be able to buy that, you need to create some awareness. If people don't know about it, then how are you going to sell it? Then you're gonna to have to create some interest next. Someone has to actually want it or, or be intrigued to learn more. So an example of this would be Tesla's ludicrous mode on their cars. A lot of people will get interested in the Tesla cars just for that one feature. So they're generating a lot of interest there. And then the desire would be, you know, some coupon, a reduced price, limited time offer. That's going to create a lot of desire to then start an action. And the action is going to be your goal, a purchase, an email sign up, a live chat with a customer. There's definitely different goals um, that you can achieve with this, but this is generally how a sales um, process will go. So where does blogging fit into this and why am i even going ahead and saying this well this is to provide more clarity around blogging for you where blogging fits in is actually in awareness and interest so when you're writing a blog it is to create awareness to create interest you're not going to create much desire and you're rarely going to create an action so thinking back to the ludicrous mode with the tesla car you could write a blog post about that and on that uh, blog post, you maybe have a video of the ludicrous mode. Then you talk about the specs of it, like uh, how fast it goes and how many seconds. And you can kind of intuitively feel that that's going to create some awareness and some interest. 
So the number one reason to blog, and this is kind of an extension of the last um, slide I just showed. From the last slide I showed, you can kind of get an idea of where blogging fits and what the purpose of it is. Because if we're creating awareness and interest and desire and action aren't that um, as much of a contributor, well, that's where it's gonna fall in. So the number one reason why you should write a blog is to introduce new consumers to your brand and to create hype for your products or services. You know, in other words, it's um, the purpose of blogging is to increase awareness and interest in your company, product, or service. So this is really eye-opening, I find, for a lot of people because when you're writing a blog, it's like, why am I really doing this? Who's this for? I, am I trying to generate a sale here? Well, no, you're not. And, and this will help a lot with writing blogs, but also working with the client because you can um, manage their expectations so they're not expecting to skyrocket their business off one blog post, but they'll definitely increase interest in their brand and awareness. An added bonus to um, blogging is that if it's on your website or your company's website, the company you work for, their SEO will actually improve and you can increase website traffic if you write some really great blogs. And that's what we'll get into next. How do you write some really great blogs? So now that we know kind of the purpose behind blogging, how do we write blogs that actually provide value, they get read, and they're not this generic kind of personal opinion piece or something like that. So my example is actually Uncle Ben's, and I find this example even more interesting now because they're kind of having some controversial uh, debate about their logo. So now this logo has been changed and the company named to Ben's Original. That doesn't really have to do anything with blogging, but I, I found that interesting. So blog readers by nature do not want to be sold to. If you're writing a blog and you're selling anything, and what I mean by that, if you're saying directly that you should buy this product or here's a link to our newest service, go there, check it out, those blogs will not do well. Because imagine yourself, you're reading a blog. Why are you reading the blog in the first place? It's to get information. It's to learn more about a topic. I've never once went to a blog or a news article or some written piece and thought, uh, you know, I want to buy something right now. It's usually to do research about something like a Tesla car. Um, you could go to their blog, read about their features, and it helps make a decision at the end eventually when you do want to make the action, but not in that moment. So this is very, very, very crucial to understand. Blog readers by nature do not want to be sold to. And I talked a little bit about why, but you know, remember that the, the purpose of blogging is to introduce new consumers to become aware of you and interested in you. Whether that's your personal brand, the company you work for, your own company, um, one of your clients, it's all to generate awareness and interest. So if we go um, through Uncle Ben's here and just, I'm gonna make up an example. You know, imagine that Uncle Ben's wrote a blog and the blog is how to cook rice. And in the blog, they actually don't instruct you on how to cook rice or any um, valuable information. They're just saying you should buy their instant cook rice. And that's the best way to do it, you know, because it's the quickest and, and so on, which may be true, but that's just not the right place to put it. Because again, we want valuable information as consumers when we're reading blogs. So the best thing that uh, Uncle Ben's could do in that situation is how to cook the best rice in the quickest time and the most tastiest. You know, this is just an example I'm making up on the spot. And in that blog, they won't talk about anything to do with their products. They're going to create an expert authority if they're not talking about their products. So, you know, what do I mean by this? You could kind of think of, let's say, skateboarding. There's lots of skateboarding and other niches that there's influencers and experts at. And, and there's really anything um, for makeup, for example, there's James Charles, right? And so Uncle Ben's could essentially do the same thing for rice. They could be the rice expert. But again, if they're trying to sell stuff, you're probably just going to leave their blog and you're not going to see them as an expert. You're going to see them probably as a salesman. So with that framework, you should know how to create a valuable blog just with that information alone. So we're gonna talk about some of the blog formats that you could write about. And this is gonna be very helpful. 
it's going to be basically a complete guide on all the different types of blogs you could write about. It's not going to be a specific topic, but it's going to be a template for each of these most popular blog formats. So you're going to see a Google Drive folder and I'm giving away for free these six template blog posts. So it walks you through everything that you need to do to write this type of post. Now, some of these are going to be pretty straightforward. Um, the how to post, we're teaching someone how to do something. A list based post, you're writing a list of you know, different things like a checklist type of blog. The what is this post? So you're explaining what something is, you know, that's pretty straightforward. And then on this right side, we get into a little bit more of complex type of blog posts here. So the evergreen page post, this is a post uh, that lives on forever. You're going to constantly go back to this type of blog and update it. And an example, which I will share with you is all of this content I'm telling you now is available on a written form in a blog post my uh, company created. So it's about 15 minutes to read the entire thing. It's, um, I would say over 3,000, 4,000, maybe 5,000 words. I come back to it all the time and I'm always updating and adding stuff. That's the evergreen post. The news jacking post is taking some piece of, of news and then writing an article about it. Um, a good example of this and, and what happens a lot is in the celebrity realm, a celebrity will do something and then they will basically take that and news jackets and uh, write a post about whatever that celebrity did. And then the infographic post, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to create some type of graphic. It's going to be downloadable and uh, walk a customer through or a reader through how to do something or something similar to that. But that's different from a how-to post because that's going to be an infographic like you would create it on a, a PDF or it's some sort of pamphlet. So we're going to go to the top seven blogging facts you need to know. I'm not going to read through all of these, but you can take a look now. Some of the most important ones to probably get is articles with images are getting 94% more views. You need to have images. And I would say even videos now is something very important to have in your blog. That would be a, some sort of best practice. But, you know, depending on the situation, you may not want to invest that much time in creating all the written content plus a video. So let's go over some examples now of five star blogs. So you know exactly what you should be kind of imitating. And it's always a good idea to imitate the people that are doing a really good job of what you want to do. So we have Gary V. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of him and uh, the HubSpot blog. We'll take a look at both of these real quick. His blogs I really love because he just provides a huge amount of value. He's like the value champion. He will give you so much and ask for nothing. In terms of uh, this blog, what you're looking for, this one may be a little different than your typical blog post, but this is good to think about because it's very unique. He's not writing actually a whole lot which is okay in this case because he is providing 80 page slide deck of how to post social media and how to do social media in 2020. So just an insane amount of value throughout this entire slide deck here. In terms of the structure of the blog, what's nice he has everything that where you could share it. He has comments on the blog and this would be more like web development stuff and web design stuff to do that. But if you're a blogger and you're working with a web design person, you need to tell them to have those things in there. He's got a sidebar set up with different types of free valuable content. So people don't just land on this and they're done. They, they may read something else. And also, you know, the spacing of the, the text is nice. It's not too much. He links to other valuable, high quality web pages, his YouTube channel, which has millions of subscribers, his Facebook page. So all of these are high quality because they're an authoritative website. So, um, you know, you wouldn't want to send people off to a website that may cause them to download something that would start a virus on their computer. Google will know that and read that and will actually lower your blog within Google and the search results. So this is a great one. And we'll go into HubSpot blog. Now their blog is absolutely killer in every single way possible. They've spent a lot, a lot of time on this. And this would be a more standard type of 
blog set up, the amount of content and value on this page alone is insane. I would just go on their blog and just start reading a whole bunch of their posts. Even the way that just they have it set up from kind of this browsing type of perspective is really nice. And look at this one. This is an evergreen post that I was talking about. This is a 36 minute read. They constantly go back and they update this post all the time. And it's probably killing it on the search engines because they're providing ton, a ton of free value. And you can probably download some free stuff on here as well. I think they said down here, I, I can't see it because some things are in the way, but download our social media calendar for free. And that's a really powerful way to within a blog. If you do want to start to sell them at some point, you can capture their email through some free content that they can download and then put them into your email marketing list. And then in the email marketing list, you're going to be by their side through the buying cycle. I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of terminology and all that, but you're basically just answering objections and kind of holding their hands. So they buy um, with you when they're ready to buy. Yeah, this is a really, really, really good blog. The photos are there. The instructions are really clear. The formatting is great. The value, like I said, value is going to be number one to getting your blog read no matter what. So it's not like there's going to be some winning tactics that you have to do, like put a title here and a, and a bold font here or anything like that. There's some structure that helps, but it's all about value. If at the end of the day, your reader says, great, I learned something new, you've won. And they're going to like, like your blog and they're going to have a good relationship with your brand. So again, this is 36 minutes of, of written content. I'm not going to scroll through all of it. Definitely check this out. Go on Google, just look up HubSpot blog. How to do market research. So this is how you will know if it's actually worth writing the blog post. There's a few ways you can do the market research. The first thing you're going to want to do is ask the client some questions. That's the easiest way to do it at the beginning. You know, tell me about your business. How is business lately? Have you done blogging before? How would you describe your customers? Um, what are the top search terms that you want to rank for as a business? What problems does your product or service solve? All those questions will get you an idea of what kind of content you can write about. The next thing is going to be the YouTube and Google search results. So if you just type in Google or YouTube dog, you're automatically going to see suggested content um, about that topic. And those suggested content is, is not just a random selection of content. It's the most popular. So you can use that to find yeah, some really high quality ideas and you know they're popular right now because that's what Google and YouTube are suggesting. And you can go a step further and even you know, hit the enter button in the search results and then see all of the search results that uh, are going on. And at that point, you can get a lot more ideas as well. And, and it helps on YouTube, the same thing. If you just enter dogs, see what kind of YouTube videos are, are happening about dogs, uh, it can give you ideas there. And you, you wanna use all these um, ways in combination with each other. I know it's a lot of information to take in at once. So I do have written content that I'm going to share with you at the end of this. So over the next week or over the length of time, it's going to take you to learn this. You can kind of have this side by side when you're writing your blogs to remember, okay, how do I do market research again? Oh, I can see right here, you know, all the things that I should do. And you want to keep in mind too, how much impact the blog's going to have too. You know, you don't want to be spending 10 hours on a blog. That really should only be 250 words doing crazy amount of market research. So that's something to keep in mind. Another one is use Google trends. So on the left of the screen, this is googletrends.com, something like that. You can look in Google, just put Google trends and it will tell you based on countries. So this is on the United States filter, but you can change it to Canada and you can see what search terms or topics are popular right now and trending. Basically, you want to start diving down from a broad topic into a more niche topic each time. So you can search up dogs into the Google Trends. At that point, you're going to see running with your dog or um, anti-slip shoes for your dog. And as you can you know, tell, they're, they're becoming more niche. And then you can search those niche terms up into the Google Trends. And at that point, 
It's going to give you even more related topics and search terms around that. And it will tell you exactly if that term is popular. So there's no guessing here. It will tell you exactly. The last one here is a uh, Google or I think it's keywords everywhere tool. You can look that up on Google keywords everywhere tool, and it's going to show you keywords as you can see on to the right here related to the search you're making. So I was looking up uh, the keyword tool and it's saying, okay, keyword tool. YouTube is another search term that's related to that. And you can use this to get blog ideas and it's going to tell you popular related keywords. So how to use Google keyword tool is down here. That would be a great post to write about. And then you can even further niche that topic down by saying how to use Google keyword tool for beginners. And that would just give you a competitive advantage over other people that are writing about that topic. One more quickly is HubSpot blog idea generator. That's a great one that I use. And again, HubSpot is killing it with their blogs. They even have a blog idea generator for other people to use. So value, 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 all free. And it's great. How to do SEO. So search engine optimization for blogs. What this means in short is you want to have terms that people are searching up on Google in your blog. So if it's about anti-slip shoes for dogs, you want to have all the variations of different ways you could say that and people would search for that in your blog. The idea of SEO for your blog is to make sure that it ranks well in a search engine. Other things you can do is the high quality links, which I had mentioned earlier. Image SEO. What this means is there's some alt text on an image when you upload it to your blog. And you're going to want to write that also in a way that because the alt text is telling Google um, what that image is. So if you put the alt text as anti-slip shoes for dogs, then Google is going to know that your blog post is about that. So you want to also do that. And then local SEO. If your blog is meant for a local audience, you're going to want to put, hey, this is for Burlington, Ontario. Hey, this is for Hamilton. Hey, this is for Etobicoke or, or Toronto. And then some best practices. We've kind of go over some of them. And again, there's no magic formula. You just need to write valuable blogs. You know, HubSpot is killing it in the blog atmosphere and industry because all they do is provide value. Same with Gary V. And Gary V really extends that to his YouTube content, to his Instagram content, to his Facebook content. It's all free value and it's for a specific audience as well. So that's something to keep in mind too. If you're writing about dogs, you want to keep in mind who is reading that blog. Who would that tend to be? For example, this may be a bit of an assumption, but we'll run with it. If it's a sports blog, you can kind of assume that um, most of, of the audience is going to be males. So you're going to have to uh, adjust your writing to that audience. So search engine optimization, we talked about that. Topic and title, that's an important one. Consider these two titles. Use olive oil to fry your egg or this other option. This one ingredient makes frying 10 times better. Um, the second option was clearly the best. Categories and tags. This is a, a web design kind of a thing and it will organize your posts in different categories. And then tags would be like very specific keywords that you could tag as well. So this will help SEO and it'll also help people just read your blogs. You know, once you have 10, 15, 50 blogs, you're going to want to implement categories and tags. Blog length, it's going to depend on the type of blog and in the templates that I provided, it's going to say exactly how long each blog should be. If you remember the facts though, um, we need to have blogs that, that have about 1500 words tend to perform better. Some blogs just won't allow for that because the content, but keep that in mind. For media, you definitely need images. Again, remember that fact, 94% um, more views if you have images. Video is really, really killing it as well. Make sure you have some video if you can, and if the project allows for that. And then you need to source everything. There's a saying where it's like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like great artists steal or something similar to that. You're not gonna plagiarize people, but in business, it's very common that people will model what other businesses are doing. So don't feel like it's all up to you and you kind of have to 
make a whole new thing up and, and kind of uh, create something new that's totally not even there, you can definitely get inspired by what other people are doing. Make sure to source it though. Don't plagiarize. Yeah, so let's go to our final topic. So this is a kind of a bonus and it's how to build a relationship with a blog client. So Google Docs is your best friend. If you're gonna do this for freelancing, um, use Google Docs, you can share it with the clients and then you can turn on commenting so they can't override um, the blog or overwrite it. They can just comment and then you can make those adjustments if you see fit. But remember, you're the expert, so not everything the client says you're gonna wanna implement. I've had clients that say, you know, can we put buy our product at the end of this? And I just say, no, that, you know, that's not going to benefit you. Um, no one's really going to buy it anyways. And it's just going to turn people off. Provide value and expertise to the client. That's kind of like what I just said. You know, you are the expert. Hold yourself confident um, and guide the client. Set expectations and timeline. A big part of this is telling the client that this is going to generate awareness and interest and helps your website SEO. With this expectation, they're not going to think that their business is going to generate 10% sales increase off of blogging. But over time, it can definitely have that effect because you're building brands with consumers. So re respond to your clients in a professional and timely manner. And these last two points I think are very, very crucial to understand. Know your costs versus your price. And this is just a, a, almost a general business advice is a lot of people and, and myself included, I did this um, and probably a year ago I did this. I would tell my clients, this is my hourly rate. If the blog is going to take um, five hours to write and I charge $25 an hour, it's said price. Don't do that. You have more costs than you realize. So get a Google sheet down and write down how much time you're putting into it, but also um, your equipment costs. So if you have a MacBook or a Windows PC, look up that model in Google and see how much it costs to rent that per month. Then find out the daily cost of that and charge the client um, a daily cost for your use of your equipment. If you have to use Adobe um, Creative Cloud, if you're working with a sales team, if you have employees, you need to include all of that. And, and maybe you're not there yet, but you definitely need to do that because if you're charging by the hour, you're actually losing money. And that's just your costs. So at that point, you're not even making a profit. So Cost versus price. Price is the, what you're going to tell your client how much your service is. So you may have costs of $750, but the price is $1,000. And what you're doing there is in your Excel sheets, um, your spreadsheet, you're writing down all your costs and then you're adding on a 10% margin, a 15% margin, 25, whatever's fair into that to get the price. So it includes profit. And then create a repeatable system that saves time. You're going to want to automate things in this process so you're not wasting time and, and resources. You know, if you don't have a communication plan in place for your client, things like emails can end up taking a long, long time, right? You need to set kind of the expectations for the client. You need to lead the client or else you'll have a lot of time spent dealing with little problems that don't need to really be dealt with. And it's just taking up more of your time and you'll end up going over budget and not getting paid when you should. So I told you about uh, the written content. It is how to write a blog post, complete A to Z guide. This is the link here on the screen. You can also go to my website, mangodigital.com and you can find it on there. Take a second to screenshot this or, or something uh, and then you can remember there, but it, it's not too hard to find if you go on my website. So thank you all and uh, we'll get to some questions. Perfect. So thank you, uh, Thomas. One of the questions that's come in from Shante is actually, can you show us the website and give us a quick rundown of Mango Digital? Sure. Yeah, I can do that. So my business is, is constantly, um, well, it's, I wouldn't say constantly changing. We're still kind of finding our bread and butter for what we want to, what we can rely on for a constant uh, continuous stream of income. So we're actually in uh, the process of developing some informational products. And then we do web design. We also do social media marketing, PPC ads, pay-per-click ads. So this is uh, the site, mango-digital.com. 
So if you want to see a sales page and something that's actually going to generate sales, I'll, I'll show you. Um, and also one more thing, if you want to find the blog, it's down here at the bottom and it's called learning resources. Click on that and you'll bring up the blog. And to drive the point home, if you're wanting to sell a product or a service, this would be the way to do it rather than in a blog post. So this is um, a landing page or a click funnel, a sales funnel type of page. It's very specific. It's a target audience is mental health therapy clinics. And this is called a video sales letter. So it, uh, it's a very um, sales oriented video. People are coming to this page because I've already interacted with them. I've done a discovery call um, with them through um, LinkedIn or, or something like that. And then they can book a, a strategy session. And um, that's where you kind of make your typical sales pitch. And then this answers objections uh, that they may have about the service. So, uh, you know, we've worked with a lot of people. We have testimonials. So Jacob asks, uh, do you have any tips for sports blogging and what's a good way to stand out? Be niche. That's my advice. I, I don't have anything in particular for sports blogging because um, it's going to be the same for everything. I mean, whether it's sports, whether it's fashion, whether it's tech, you're going to be niche. There's so much competition out there. That's primarily the only way you can stand out and also providing a ton of value. So an example of a sports blog that would be niche is sports blog for women that are mothers and have kids in sports you know something really that uh hits a certain type of person i would recommend doing some research on that to find what the demand is like for certain type of sports blogs but you need to niche down that's the only way plus value if you have a generic sports blog those are everywhere and there's big brands doing them already um, perfect. So Sophia actually asks, what's your main advice when it comes to blogs, in particular for sustainability uh, related content? Sustainability. Again, it's, I'm going to say, I'm going to sound repetitive, but it, it's providing value. And um, for sustainability content, I would think of, you know, there's those templates that are going to really help you. Um, so look at those. It'll give you some ideas and do some market research. But that being said, a blog about how to live a more sustainable life, you know, um, things that you could uh, do, like get a reusable straw or different types of, of products or services that could kind of go along with that. I mean, that's one way you could take it, but there's lots of ways. And my best advice would just be provide value and do your market research and have some kind of niche that you're targeting. Uh, Liliana asks, do blogs actually make money? What's the best way to get started? And is WordPress a good uh, online software I should use? I see. Blogs can definitely, definitely make money. The thing is, it's more of a business question at that point. And uh, in terms of, let me answer this first. In terms of uh, a website for blogs, wordpress.org is going to be a difficult one. WordPress.com, it may be an option for you, but there's also Wix, there's Squarespace. Those are great options. But, you know, WordPress.com is not a bad option at all. You, you, for a blog type of website, you want something easy to set up that you can do it yourself. And blogs can definitely make money. The thing is, like I said, it's more of a business question. You have to have some sort of unique type of selling proposition, something that's unique to you. For example, my one friend will go to the Philippines and he's going to do a blog and a vlog with it. He's going to create a website and it's called Free You Financial. So everything's about how you can get financially free. And then from that point, the blog can generate a lot of audience, a lot of traffic. People will um, follow him on YouTube and through his website and through his socials. And because he's built himself up to be a Free You Financial guy, then you can go and sell different types of products, like an information-based product. And from there, I, there's a lot you can do. I mean, you can start selling a, a very small product that's $10, where it's like the best checklist for getting financially free. From that point, you can build a larger product and kind of resell it to that audience that's already bought a smaller product. There's definitely ways, but it comes more down to what's your business idea. Is it providing a lot of value? Is it the right audience? Um, is it niche enough? And the last question is from Alexa and it regards 
schooling. So what courses have you found to be the most beneficial either through Humber or elsewhere? Uh, in terms of blogging, I would assume? Yeah. Uh, I guess in general, yes. For blogging? Um, hmm. I, I don't know because I, I didn't really um, do any type of courses like that. But what I will show you is one that I, I really liked. And it gives you just an idea of why digital marketers do what they do, which can be very empowering feeling. And let's see, and, and very confident. You can feel very confident when you know kind of the reasoning behind things. So I'm just going to log in, hold on one sec, um, and show you this. And this course, I think, is only $20, and it has 20 hours of content. It's an amazing course. And it goes through blogging and, um, and all of that. Okay, right here. The Complete Digital Marketing Course, 12 courses in one. It's only $20. Like I said, 23 and a half hours of content. It talks about everything that you would need to know. Market research, make a website, email marketing, copywriting. This would be like blogs and stuff like that. SEO, YouTube marketing. And it tells you why you're doing these things, um, which this helped me a ton um, in my digital marketing career. Is that all for questions? Um, just scrolling through, yes. If there is any other extra questions anyone does think of later on, feel free to message Thomas through his LinkedIn, which is posted in the chat, as well as sending him an email. Uh, Thomas, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to actually come out and present your webinar regarding blogging and best practices. And we hope to have you come back and present another one with us. That would be awesome. Thank you, Devin. Uh, thank you, Mackenzie, for moderating this. You guys are great. And that is all. That is all the content. Uh, yeah, like uh, Devin said, please connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any more questions and I can help you out. For those others in the chat that are looking forward to attending any other webinars, feel free to access the link that we'll be posting once again into the chat and feel free to register for any of the other webinars coming up in the weeks to come. Uh, other than that, thank you so much and hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the day. See you all.